You ever think about how the Vikings managed to sail the roughest seas in vessels that could survive years of saltwater storms and ice without modern adhesives or synthetic coatings? Most people assume that it was just the craftsmanship of the hulls or the design of the longships. But the real secret was hidden in something surprisingly simple. Oil. Not just any oil, but a carefully heated and absorbed mixture that essentially turned the wooden planks of a ship into something almost impervious to water. Today we rely on epoxies, fiberglass and synthetic resins to waterproof boats. Yet centuries ago the Norse had developed a technique that rivaled or even outperformed modern methods in durability and flexibility. If you've ever wondered how the Vikings could sail to Greenland, Iceland, or even North America and have their ships survive multiple voyages, understanding this oil bath is crucial. Stick with me, because the method itself is as fascinating as the history behind it, and there are practical applications even for modern boat restoration, survival craft, or historical reenactments. The Vikings didn't just coat their ships, they infused the wood with oil. The process starts long before any planks touch the keel. Vikings selected specific types of timber. Oak was preferred for its density and tight grain, which naturally resisted water absorption. Once the planks were cut and shaped, they underwent a critical treatment. Immersion in heated animal oils often derived from fish, seal, or livestock. This wasn't a simple coating. The heat opened up the wood's pores, allowing the oil to penetrate deep into the fibres. The result was a wood structure that wasn't merely covered in oil. It was saturated, creating a semi-permanent water barrier. Unlike modern varnishes that can crack or peel, the Viking's oil bath moved with the wood. When the ship flexed under waves, the oil-filled fibres absorbed the stress rather than splitting or leaking. For anyone looking to replicate this, you'd begin by carefully heating the oil. Too hot and it scorches the wood, too cold and it won't penetrate. Traditional sources indicate that Vikings would use a low, controlled heat, sometimes over embers, stirring constantly to maintain consistency. You could do a smaller-scale version by heating linseed oil or tongue oil in a controlled environment and submerging oak or pine planks for several hours. Repeated immersion and drying cycles increase penetration, making the wood highly water-resistant. They combined heat, time and patience in ways modern craftsmen rarely consider. One of the biggest mistakes modern restorers make is thinking of waterproofing as a quick fix. The Vikings treated it as a time-intensive process. After initial immersion, the planks would be left to slowly cool and cure, often in a sheltered area with controlled airflow. This allowed the oil to settle and bond with the wood fibres, enhancing its water-repellent properties. Observations from archaeological ship finds, such as the Oseberg and Gokstad ships, show that these techniques weren't accidental. The planks still contained traces of organic oils, and in some cases the vessels had survived over a century with only minor rot. For survival enthusiasts, there's a lesson here. Patience and attention to detail can dramatically improve the longevity of wooden tools and crafts. If you're constructing a small boat or even a canoe, applying an oil bath in stages with careful drying periods between applications can give you a vessel far more durable than a simple brush-on sealant. It's honestly the difference between something that fails in a few months and something that lasts decades. 
The Vikings understood that the type of oil mattered as much as the method. Not all oils are created equal. Fish oils, rich in long-chain fatty acids, gave the wood a flexible, deep saturation ideal for the constant movement of planks under load. Seal oils were prized for their natural resistance to cold and salt water, making them perfect for northern seas. Livestock oils like tallow were used more for initial treatment and temporary waterproofing during construction, then topped with fish oil for long-term durability. Modern enthusiasts can, you know, experiment with linseed or tongue oils, but for authenticity, fish oils heated gently over low fire offer the closest approximation. So, let's talk about some practical steps for applying this knowledge today. Even if you're not building a Viking longship, there's, well, tremendous value in understanding this method. For wooden boat maintenance, especially in survival scenarios or off-grid living, an oil bath can really rejuvenate older planks, seal joints, and, you know, extend the life of wooden tools and structures. Start with clean, dry wood. Heat the chosen oil to a temperature where it's fluid but not smoking. Immerse the wood, allow deep penetration, then remove and let it cure slowly. Repeat this process multiple times. The result is wood that won't warp or rot easily, can withstand wet conditions and has a natural flexibility synthetic coatings struggle to match. Even on a smaller scale, for things like tools, handles, or wooden shelters, applying oil in this manner preserves integrity while creating a protective barrier that conventional varnishes simply cannot replicate. The technique is, honestly, a bridge between historical authenticity and practical, everyday utility. The Viking oil bath wasn't just clever. It was, in fact, revolutionary. When you look at Viking maritime success, it's easy to focus on navigation, raiding tactics, or ship design. Yet this simple, methodical immersion of wood in heated oils may have been the unsung factor that made those long voyages possible. It shows that sometimes the most effective solutions aren't new. They're ancient, tried, and tested over centuries. The Viking oil bath is a perfect example of how observation, patience, and material knowledge can outclass modern chemistry. If you want to dive deeper into these historical survival techniques, experiment with small-scale oil treatments, or explore more ways ancient wisdom can outshine modern methods. Make sure you subscribe and share this with fellow enthusiasts. The Vikings didn't just conquer seas. They left lessons in resilience and craftsmanship that we can still apply today.